Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is Keo Dyken coming back at you guys again with another review. And today I have something I feel is really impressive for you guys. Um, a few of you guys have been asking me for it, and I'm inclined to deliver. So uh, today's video is going to be the Xbox 360 mod. Now, this video doesn't just apply to the Xbox 360. It also applies to the PS3, the PS4, the Xbox One, and many other consoles and PCs out there, even the Retro Pi, Raspberry Pi, and the old rate unit in any other console you can think of that has a USB import. So if you guys have been in the uh, look or the market for a video that showcases how to mod your cabinet with all the new next-gen consoles, this is it. Um, there are no gimmicks today. Uh, this will be the simplest modding video you will possibly find uh, at this point for the RK 1UP uh, mod, I take it you guys have already completed the ETA Prime tutorial where you have either gotten a HAP or Sanwa joystick for your mod and also the buttons as well. Um, so, but let's go ahead and get into this video because I know you guys have been trying to get around to this for quite some time. This is the Kronos Max Plus. This is the device that makes everything possible. This device costs $60. You can find it at GameStop, Amazon, eBay. I'll leave a link in the description below to uh, several other places you can get it. You can also go directly to the company website and buy it. Now, I got this unit about it back in 2014. Uh, the purpose for me getting this, because I had the Ori EX uh, gamepad, uh, joystick for my Xbox 360 because I got it from Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and at the time the Xbox One had just released and there were no compatible ways to make your previous equipment uh, customizable or retrofitted for the new next gen consoles so I looked this up and this is what I got so you could use a PS3 controller on an Xbox 360 Xbox One whatever your pleasure may be this is all self programming writing scripts support it with the community this is what makes everything possible now there are other devices out there I do have a Titan 2 which I won't talk too much about today but this device will allow you to connect all your consoles and the Wii U the Wii U uh, well the Wii the Wii U and Nintendo Switch and several other devices out there this also works for Oldroid as well Raspberry Pi Again, any devices you guys can think about that has USB connections, this is what makes everything possible. Uh, there have been many companies, retro gaming companies, selling adapters and whatnot for 50 bucks and 80 bucks and whatnot, and it's a one-time use. And again, if you guys have been following my channel for any time, I believe in future-proofing devices, and this is what this stuff is. So uh, this mod will only take you anywhere between two and a half to five minutes tops. I promise you guys that. You guys can, you know, besides me talking everything, you guys can put a timer on there. It's really that simple. It won't get any easier. All right, so what we're gonna do is this is the Chronos Max Plus. Uh, the colors on here are customizable. There's about six different colors you can have on here. And I'm going to plug in this device into my computer this the other end of this is my usb is plugged into my laptop currently we're going to plug it into the programming port this is the thing that makes everything possible so what i'm going to do is just set it here for right now and let's go into our chronos max program All right, this is the Chronos Max program. This is the thing that makes everything possible for you guys and everything simplified. I already have the scripts installed over here to my right, but because this is a tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and erase everything for you guys and show you how easy this is. I right click. I'm going to delete all of these. And you know what? Before I get any further, I want to show you guys. Uh, this is the company website, the Chronos Max Plus. Obviously, you see it supports Xbox One, PS4, 360, PS3, and other PC uh, adapters. So if you guys had bought some steering wheels and wanted to use them for your Raspberry Pi, an Oldroid, your Xbox 360, 
uh, PS3, PS4, whatever the sky's the limit, whatever is your pleasure, this makes it possible. Okay? So this is all you need. Uh, you can write scripts for these. If you guys aren't familiar with what scripts are, you know, in fact, I will just show you the menu. We'll go over to the online tutorial. Uh, and this device isn't just about converting your Xbox 360 for your arcade cab. This will let you hold down a button and do rapid fire. This will also let you hit a button and run combinations. So let's say if you were playing Street Fighter and you wanted to do six combinations or seven, all you have to do is hit one button and you can program it to do whatever the heck you want to do. So it's every, a lot of people use this to play Fortnite, Rainbow Six, and other games online. And uh, you could actually cheat on any one of those consoles and get away with it because it's a stealth program. It runs on your side of hardware, and you, it can't be detected. So it's a great device to have, especially if you're into rapid fire and you don't want to tap on a button every time. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this thing programmed. So this is what makes it possible. If you guys want to put a timer on to see how long this actually takes to modify it, and it's the simplest way you can do it. Okay, so we already have our Chronos Max Plus programmed in. First thing I want to do is go down here to my tools and options. Next, we want to go down to uh, device, and my output protocol is Xbox 360 because we're setting it up for the Xbox 360. Uh, you can have this on automatic if you're using it for PC or any one of the other generic controllers or uh, console units, but if you have a specific system in mind, make sure you just go ahead and plug that in and select it and everything will be good to go. So uh, we got the Xbox 360 protocol set. And uh, now we're going to go to our plugins, which makes this very simple. We're going to go to our Max Mapper. And I already have my input plugged in as an Xbox controller. And I have my output outputting at, as an Xbox 360. Now, the difficult part and reason why you guys won't see a lot of videos online about how to mod an Xbox 360, Xbox One, or PS4, or even a Nintendo Switch is because, uh, well, we won't talk about the Nintendo Switch, that's a little different. But the reason why you won't see a lot of videos with Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PS4 is because they have a decryption method. So what this device will allow you to do is decrypt the Xbox protocols so you can use whatever controller you want it to be. Um, so after, it, well, well, I'll walk you guys through the process. But one of the other second problems is... Uh, typically, if you are using a joypad, the sticks will go up, down, left, and right. However, after doing this mod, and that's what took me a little bit of time to kind of play around with, is that the Sanwa uh, encoders, the USB encoders, that have came with either the HAP or Sanwa uh, 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 joysticks and buttons that has been recommended online, is that it inverts the joysticks. And I've never seen this before in any of the uh, arcade sticks because it doesn't happen in any of the joy pads like the Xbox 360s, the Mad Cats and whatnot. So what I mean by that is when I plug this into my Xbox and my Xbox One, my 360 and my Xbox One, my up was down, my down was up, my left was right, and my right was left. So what we have to do is reconfigure the left stick axis. So if you look at my screen right here, this is the axis that could cause some problems if you don't follow this direction correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert the left analog stick to make our up go, uh, well, make our up go up, down, down, left, and left, and right is right. Because right now, if I use it as is without programming this, everything is going to be uh, going in the opposite direction and not responding correctly. So what we're going to do is we are going to invert our left and right joystick and we're going to generate the script. And as you can see, this is the script that makes it happen. So uh, I will post this in the description for you. I will also be in the forums to provide this for you, but it's really that simple, and this is already done. So if you guys are watching this tutorial and following it really slow, uh, you could do this yourself. So we're going to go over to Programmer. And I could choose to name it, but we're not going to name it for this point. 
So uh, at this point, so we're going to drag that over. And that's loaded into slot number one here on the Kronos Max. Now, in addition to this, you also have a device monitor, which will let me see exactly how the controls are uh, allocated uh, to this. So, in fact, let me go ahead. I'm going to move this forward a little bit because I want you guys to see this for yourself. All right, so we're looking at the, uh, right now my controls are being read as the, oops, I don't know why, I got to change the output protocol over here. Sorry about that. Output protocol is going to be the XB360. All right, so right now I am moving around the joystick. In fact, I'll show you guys this. I'll switch over for just a second. So I'm moving around the joystick here on my uh, controller. And we're going to switch back here just so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, you see how the Xbox 360 and the PS3 LX is lining up to 100? Uh, those should be going in opposite directions. One should be running, uh, reading one plus 100. The other one should be running negative 100. And you guys will see that as soon as I activate this script. Negative 100, that's going right. Now I'm going up. And now I'm going down. So uh, each one of these should be reading opposite from one another if the script is running successfully. So you guys will see that here in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and close this out. And we're going to program device. And we're done. So let's go back up to our device monitor. And you will notice, all right, now that we have the script installed, we have it installed to slot uh, one. So we want to make sure we change that because if you don't, it's still going to read the same way. So uh, what we're going to do is switch over to slot number one. And then we'll go ahead and switch back here. And you will see that the joysticks are going in opposite directions of one another. You have plus 100 on the right side, I'm sorry, on the left, and the Xbox 360 is, re uh, is reading it uh, negative 100. So I'm actually going left right now on my Arcade 1-Up joystick, but the Xbox is reading it as uh, a different direction. So that's exactly what you want. Now I'm going right because these controls are inverted. Up and down. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. We're going to switch back over now to our screen. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and plug this in. Now I have to plug the, pull this out. I only have this in there for demonstration purposes so you guys could uh, see the uh, diagram. But uh, this is the uh, joystick from the, um, the encoder part. So that's what's in... Uh, that's what was hooked up. So what I have to do now is authenticate my Xbox controller. So this is my Xbox 360 controller. And in fact, I'm using a wired controller I got at GameStop. So uh, either this controller or even this one down here, it has to be a wired controller, not wireless. Uh, they do sell wireless adapters separately, but that's a big hassle. So really won't need any of that and as you can see now my controller is now authenticated now uh, for those of you guys out there interested in playing two players you will need two Kronos Maxes and you do need two controllers um, I cannot plug a Kronos Max in here and use the same controller to authenticate because the Xbox 360 cannot authenticate two uh, controller or the same controller at the same time so you need to make sure you have two wired controllers and you need two Kronos Maxes to make this work. Now, of course, I do have the Titan 2, which does accept two controllers, but that's a whole other issue for a whole other video. I'm not going to even get into that tonight. But uh, this accepts two controllers. So as of right now, we'll, we'll hold off on this, but we'll go from there. All right, so we're authenticated at slot number one. I'm going to pull out the Xbox 360 controller. 
And we're going to put back in our... I hope this is the right one, because I have a bunch of this stuff laying around there. <laughs> Oops, that's the blue side. Wrong side. Just get my controller here. And we have our joystick plugged in. So let's go ahead and get this set back up. And there you have it. So that didn't take too long. It only takes a couple of minutes. And you will have a full working Xbox 360 mod right there in front of you. Now, um... In my personal opinion, I believe that the Xbox 360 is probably one of the top number one, two or three options as far as using it as a mod. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, the Xbox Live library is very extensive. Uh, it has over 600 to 700 Xbox Live games on there that you can use specifically for arcade. And in addition to that, a lot of these games that are retro games, like Final Fight, NBA Jam, uh, Bust a Move, Street Fighter uh, uh, 2, Street Fighter uh, Puzzle 2, a lot of these games have been revamped for HD quality. And you're not going to find that on Pi, you're not going to find that on PC, you're not going to find that on Hyperspin, you're not going to find that anywhere else because... The unique thing about the Xbox Live Arcade Library is they went out and got a lot of the top uh, games and uh, remixed them and upscaled them to HD quality content. And we'll go ahead and load Ninja Turtles there. And uh, that's one of the very unique things because you can't even get this on the Xbox One. A lot of the games that are available on the Xbox Live Arcade are not backwards compatible for the Xbox One, and 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 that should, you know, that should pretty much get your attention because uh, even the PS3 at the time, which was the counterpart of the Xbox 360, didn't have an extensive library. Uh, in addition to that, uh, even the PS4, they don't have a large library, so. That is one of the unique things about having your Xbox 360, and if you're one of the fortunate ones to, you know, really download a lot of the games, uh, you could have a really good system set up for next-gen uh, gaming that retro gaming and the original ROMs aren't going to give you. Uh, for example, we could play Ninja Turtles online right now if we wanted to. Uh, you could do that through RetroArc, I'm aware of that, but the ease of use to play X-Men... Ninja Turtles, Final Fight, Golden Axe, a lot of the old classics, they're, to play online and have a customized menu, is right here on your fingertips. And let's see. Uh, now, when I go in here to select, currently my button is A, B, X, Y, and I believe like these are left and right. Uh, yeah, these are left and right. Start button is still the same. That's interesting. That never changed. So let's go ahead and start up a game here, and we'll use Raphael. And the other part, uh, positive thing about this is that there's no delay on the buttons. I'm not playing with one hand here. And there you guys have it. Uh, your Xbox 360 mod is complete. All of your controls are fully functioning and working. And all you have to do is just use either a Kronos Max device, uh, get you some good buttons on here, and you're good to go. And uh, for those of you guys who've never had a full chance to really download a lot of games with the Xbox Live library, just want to kind of showcase a few things for you. We'll go ahead and return back to the arcade. Now, this isn't my entire library, but just so you guys have an idea, um, if you do plan on installing a trackball, this option will also work really good for you because Centipede's on here. I don't anticipate anybody really playing Destiny or one of the other games on here. 
But you also have Family Game Night. You have Final Fight, Double Dragon Neon. You have for Classic Frogger. Heavy Weapon. Uh, NBA Jam. Now, uh, another good reason why you would want to use either a PS3 or an Xbox 360 is because this is the latest version of NBA Jam. Uh, this version of NBA Jam has not been released in years. I believe this came out in 2011. And uh, this was the updated roster with all the Lakers and uh, during with Kobe, Pal Gasol, and uh, during that era. So let's go ahead and load this so you guys can see the difference. This is the most up-to-date version of NBA Jam. You won't find this in any type of retro gaming, nor can the Pi or the Odroid run this. This was specifically for the Wii and uh, the next-gen console. The Wii, the Wii U, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. I believe that's it. Yeah, I believe this was the 2010-2011 season. And, of course, you can go ahead and customize your buttons as well. Uh, if you are modding this for your 360, I do suggest uh, drilling two more holes and adding in two more buttons because uh, the left trigger and right trigger button will need to go somewhere. Some games have it or, or require it. But for a lot of the arcade games, you definitely don't need it. So you do have that option there. <laughs> definitely a fun game if you guys haven't had a chance to play it. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, exit out of there. And I'll exit out. And we'll hit the B button. So now that we've gone ahead and exited out of NBA Jam, I just want to take you guys through a few more games. We'll take a look at Final Fight here. And this is something I wish some of the new retro companies have actually done with their uh, their versions of their cabinets. I know at games, we haven't seen exactly what they're doing, but if you take a look and see what the Xbox Live Arcade did with Final Fight, it's pretty impressive. Uh, even though this is an older game, they actually revamped the entire uh, UI here at the main menu screen. It just gave you a different feel to the game, so definitely compliment them on that. And, of course, here's another retro game here, fully upgraded. Everything still looks and feels and plays the same way. But, of course, they added a few achievements. And they also added online connectivity. So, I mean, obviously, that's the standard with uh, Xbox 360. But this is a great game. I mean, this is a great hub. So let's do a new game here. Definitely gives you a different feel. And, of course, people can also uh, join your game as well once you play. So you can start a session and other people from random places could jump in and join you. So it's pretty good to have.
Now, if I wanted to, I could program my Cronus Max just to uh, do rapid fire. So all I would have to do is hold in the button and it would attack. So there's a lot of little nifty things you can do with the uh, Cronus Max. All right, well, guys, I think that about does it for me. Uh, my name is Kiel Uh Please uh, like this video if you found this uh, mod helpful. Again, as I said, you won't see too many of these online because it's definitely not something to do uh, easy to do. Uh, PlayStation 3, I really don't consider that a mod because that's all plug and play. Uh, we have a PlayStation 3 down here. And if I wanted to just plug everything into that, I mean, it works automatically. So there's not much effort you have to do to get that thing going uh again my name is keel Dykin. you guys can find me online on facebook or you can also subscribe to uh the Dykin clan i'm uh growing my clan i haven't really used that page in a long time but you can subscribe on there and uh or also consider subscribing to the channel if you guys would like to see more interesting videos like this uh this video is a part of my series how to modify your rk cabinet from top to bottom and I haven't done a full review on how I've modified my cabinet. Um, I did do a little sneak peek of that in my last video. Uh, so um, you guys could take a look at that. But I will do that as well. So I still have several more mods to do. This was one of them. We'll be, we'll be, we will be doing, excuse me there. We will be doing the Xbox One. Also the Wii U. Uh, the Nintendo Switch. The Oldroid. And, of course, I know you guys have been waiting for my light gun tutorial. But uh, please, in the meantime, please check out my other video I posted a few days ago, uh, the main menu on how to set up your controls for that. Uh, that is very important. And as a starter video on how to uh, set up your dolphin bar for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, guys, my name is Keel Dykin. Uh, please subscribe if you like this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and appreciate it. Thank you for watching.